So the iPhone 14's biggest flaw is cold weather. Now to figure out how terrible cold weather is to the iPhone 14, Monty and I did all these tests at all these different temperatures. For you Imperials, da 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 da. Da, da, da. The first test was a boot test, and I basically measured how long it took for the Apple logo to appear and disappear on a boot sequence on an acclimatized iPhone 14 Plus. At room temperature, on an average of three observations, it took about 13 seconds. At zero degrees, 14 seconds. At minus 10, 13 and a half seconds. And at minus 20, it took 14 seconds. So not a big difference, about a one second difference between all the different boot times between all the different temperatures. Seriously thought if a chip was cold, it was gonna run slower, but that's not the case apparently. Now officially, Apple has always maintained that the recommended use of temperature for your iPhone sits between zero and 35 degrees Celsius. Storage temperatures are slightly different. They are recommended to be minus 20 and 45 degrees. And like dogs and small children, Apple recommends that you not leave your device unattended in a car. Next test was a camera access test to see if the screen would go wonky. Basically, I measured how long it took for the camera to come to online from the lock screen. Now from this test, the screen of the iPhone 14 Plus at all temperatures had the camera come online on an average of a quarter of a second. It's so fast. The hardest thing about this test was actually accessing the screen as the condensation at the colder temperatures would actually build up up on the screen, making screen access a little flaky. That was the second test. What do we do for the third test, Monty? We did a video processing test. First, I had to capture a cinematic masterpiece of Monty and my micro machines. As a side note, these newer micro machines are really nothing like the diecast ones I grew up with. But still, nostalgia! For each test, I would load the video into iMovie, add a filter to it, and then measure the time it took to export the file. At room temperature, it took about 63 seconds. At zero degrees, 60 seconds. At minus 10, it was 150 seconds. And at minus 20, it was... 194 seconds for the first three exports. So this was the first test that showed noticeable difference between the iPhone at different temperatures. Woohoo, high five Monty. But here's the cool thing. At the colder temperatures, Monty suggested that we do more observations. The more observations we did, the faster the exports got. So one can really assume that as the internals of the iPhone got a bit warmer, the iPhone started working normally again. Which makes sense because things that are warmed up usually are better. Like my car, my knees, my significant other. Now before we get to the pseudo gotcha moment and the uh, kick to the iPhone's uh, nether regions. If this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, hit subscribe. I'm a reviewer, not an influencer. So everything you see on my channel, Monty spent way too much effort doing it. So help me out by subscribing, sharing the videos, as well as getting your stuff through my links. All right, let's keep going. Now onto battery life test. For this test, I charged an iPhone 14 Pro to about 50%, left it at each temperature for about an hour so that the iPhone's acclimatized, and then captured slow-mo footage with the screen brightness at maximum with the light on. Honestly, this test wasn't as fruitful as I thought it would be. The slow-mo footage draining method is my preferred method of draining an iPhone battery, and I thought that it would definitely show the differences between cold battery and warm battery, and it really didn't. At room temperature, the 14 Pro lasted about 78 minutes. At zero degrees, 60 minutes. At minus 10, it was 52 minutes and at minus 20 it was 57 minutes. So there was no noticeable trend other than at room temperature, it lasted a bit longer. Seriously, that test was just so disappointing to me. But that kind of does make sense because as the iPhone would warm up from the torch running from the iPhone working pretty hard capturing all that slow-mo footage, the entire device would get kind of warm. So I guess we can say cold weather has no effect, no effect on the iPhone's battery, right? Nah. -uh. While I was doing the previous test with the video processing, I did notice that for every video rendered at minus 20 degrees, Celsius, the iPhone 14 Pro was consistently going through 5 to 7% of the battery each render. At room temperature, it was about 1%. Gotcha, Apple! Yeah, I, I guess. At the end of the day, everything that I've shown you hasn't really been a big deal breaker. Well, Keep watching. Biggest kick to the junk is charging your iPhone outside in the cold. iPhone charging works fine at room temperature, obviously. It works fine at anything above zero or close to it, but anything below zero, the iPhone doesn't really start charging. Now specifically, leaving an iPhone at temperatures below zero and then trying to charge that device doesn't work. I did both wireless and wire charging and the result was the same. It just didn't charge. Hi Monty. So I've got an iPhone sitting outside for over an hour and a half, an hour and 38 minutes at least. And it's sitting right there. Temperature on the device, about minus 10. The charge on the device will be 4%. An hour and a half and got me 4%. This thing's so cold. I wonder if it's the same as like licking a uh, lamppost when it's really cold. <laughs> How about if it starts at room temperature and then you move it outside? Here we have an iPhone that's been warmed up by Monty and then we put it outside and in 25 minutes the MagSafe charger produced 27% charge to the device. We did the same test with the device at room temperature and we got closer to 40% in that same time period. So the reality is that your iPhone's 
going to be unusable at minus 20 degrees Celsius or minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit. But both these iPhones start off when I was doing all the B-rolls at about 50% uh, battery life and none of these things will turn on now. So yeah, cold weather does not do wonders for your iPhone. So yeah, I'm going to go back inside. I'm actually really cold now. So the short of it is that if your iPhone is frozen and you want to charge it, put it in your pants and warm it up and then charge it because you're not going to be able to charge it if it's just bone frozen. So that's all I got for this video. Questions, comments, leave them down there. If you want me to do the same test with an iPad, let me know because I'd be more than happy to because this was actually really fun to do. Thinking about getting some iPhone accessories? Check out some of those links. Thanks for watching.